Good afternoon. Well, it's afternoon where I am at. Uh, my name is Ty. I also go by the name Mastablasta. I am uh, the co-host of the show Between Two Biomes, uh, where we review a lot of courses. And I am the host of the tutorial series for building courses in GS Pro. Uh, the purpose of this video is to give you a high-level overview of the design building process. Doing this for two reasons. One, Maybe you're thinking about designing a course and you're just trying to decide uh, whether you want to get into this or not. <laughs> like the question is, what am I getting myself into here? Can I do this? This is going to give you an intro to that. The second reason is if you have no, if you don't want to build a course, hopefully this at least gives you an appreciation of what the designers do and the things they had to learn in order to bring those great courses to you. OK, um, one of the most common questions I get is how much is this going to cost me um, if you want to build a very simple course, maybe your home course, you can do it for zero dollars. OK, all the software that we use in here is free. However, there are some pieces of software um, that if you want to up your game a little bit will cost you some money. I would say on average, if you want to buy the essential pieces of software, um, it's going to cost you probably around a hundred to $200. Okay. Um, but you do not need to buy a thing. All right, let's get into this. So I want to spend a couple minutes explaining at a high level, what the course building process looks like and the hours and amount of time involved. And then if at the, I get the end of this list, Turn the video off if you're not interested. Um, if you want more detail, I'm going to go into each one of these a little bit more in subsequent slides. OK, so let's start off. First thing we need to do is we need to get terrain and imagery about our course. Terrain is simply, hey, the dirt, the ground. And is that ground go up? Does that ground go to the side? Does it go flat? Is it sloped? That's really what the terrain does. Imagery is a picture, satellite imagery, looking down on our course to give us guidelines on where stuff's at, okay? Where are the bunkers at? Where are the cart paths at? Where are the greens, fairways, all that stuff. Without those two, you're probably, well, let me face it, you're gonna be SOL as far as building a course. Um, your course would be completely flat, which is very rare, and you're gonna have no idea where stuff's at if you don't have current imagery, okay? That process takes, one to four hours. I would say it's the least rewarding part of the process. There's no artistic involvement <laughs> at all in that process. Um, so it is what it is. Splining. Now, splining is where we define, okay, on the ground, what that piece of ground is. Is that a fairway? Is that a semi-rough? Is it a bunker? Is it water? Is it a cart path? Is it the green? Okay. Is it a parking lot? Um, the reason we do that is you need to define how it's going to interact with the golf ball. So if that golf ball lands there, what is it going to do? Is it going to roll out? Is it going to bounce? Is it going to stop? Okay. And when you hit that golf ball, how should it interact? Splining defines all those areas. Okay. It also somewhat defines how it looks, but that's more important. How things look are more are done later on. Okay. Laying your splines on your terrain. So now we've got our splining done. In other words, we define what certain areas are and we have our terrain, which is our elevation. Laying your splines in your terrain, we merge those two things together and we create a 3D object we call a mesh, which can be used inside of a game so that things roll. The ball rolls, things look up, things look down. Um, and that process takes about one to 20 plus hours. Most of your time is going to be spent in Unity editing. Unity, uh, GS Pro uses the Unity gaming engine, and we use Unity Editor to create the golf courses. Um, that process takes four to 40 plus hours. Um, that's where you're going to spend the vast majority of your time. Unity is also where we make things look pretty, okay? Splining defines on how things are going to interact with the ball. Unity defines how things really look, okay? 3D modeling is completely optional, but let's say that you have a clubhouse that is very distinct, or you know maybe you have a tree that you want to create, or you have um, you want to make a, a cart or a golf cart. You can do that in 3D modeling. It's completely optional. You don't need to do it, but 3D modeling is really cool, and I think it's one of the things that makes GS Pro really powerful. Greenkeeper. 
Uh, Greenkeeper is a part of the OPCD tool sets, the Open Platform Course Design tool set. And it's used, that's basically how we define our out of bounds, uh, where you're gonna be hitting the ball from on the T boxes, um, where the pins are, and a lot of course information. Uh, lastly, Greenkeeper is gonna kind of bundle everything together. We export that to GS Pro, and then you publish your course. So all in all, if I had to estimate, this turns out to be about 117 hours. I would say for first course builders, if you've never built a course before and you want something that looks good, okay, something you wanna brag about, something that you're gonna post into the game, it's gonna take you about 100 to probably 117 hours. If you're just looking for something to play, to create for yourself, to put on your simulator because you want your home course to practice on, but you really don't care how it looks. It doesn't have to look really realistic. You can probably do something in 40 hours or less. All right. Now, if I just completely blew your mind and you hate me and you want nothing to do with this anymore, stop the video now. If you want more detail on this stuff, continue watching. Here we go. So terrain and imagery. So this upper left here is an example of a terrain, um, and that consists of LIDAR data. So what's LIDAR? LIDAR, they fly a drone or they fly a plane over the course and shoot freaking laser beams down and take elevation measurements. It's really cool. Um, and for to build a course, you need high resolution LIDAR data. High resolution means we typically want one meter resolution. That means that they're taking an elevation measurement every one meter around the course. Now, this data is not available to all places. So United States, it's pretty well covered. Europe is kind of spotty. Places like third world countries, forget about it. You know, if you wanna build a course in Mexico, probably not gonna happen. So you need to figure out whether you could find that LIDAR data or not. And there are resources in the tutorial to help you figure out that data exists or not. Um, and it's well documented, okay? The second thing we need, that, that is just, LIDAR in this terrain is just elevation data. Well, we need to figure out like how that late, how our course is laid out. And that's where on the right here, we got satellite imagery. Uh, uh, Google has good satellite imagery, so it is Bing, and that's where we typically get it from. The key thing here though, is it has to be somewhat recent um, because if your course changed, if they remodeled your course and they added bunkers or they moved, they, they did some changes to the course and your satellite imagery doesn't match up because it's too old, that becomes challenging as well. So you need to have LIDAR data, high resolution LIDAR data, and you need to have somewhat reasonable uh, new satellite data as well. This process is completely documented in the tutorial series by me, yours truly, and it takes you probably about one to five hours. To me, this is the pretty boring part because it's very technical. There's no artistic involvement. It's very a matter of fact. And at the end, you've got your train and you've got your satellite imagery. All right, moving on. Now, once you have that, um, the next thing you need to do is you're gonna take your satellite image that you gathered in that previous step and you're gonna lay it into a tool called Inkscape. Inkscape is free. Oh, by the way, everything I've set up to this point it's free and it continues to be free. Inkscape is another software platform called uh, that is free. You put your satellite imagery down and then you trace everything out. So you can see here, I've got my fairways, my bunkers, my greens, my tee boxes. I even have a parking lot in here. I got creeks running through. This pink area is what we call a custom area, which is gonna be heavily wooded with trees once I get it into Unity later on. Bottom line is, this is a two-dimensional representation of our golf course. Okay, this is gonna take us four to 15 hours. Now, once we have this done, we're gonna take that terrain that we created earlier, those splines that we did in Inkscape, and we send them off to this thing called the Clender, which stands for Cloud Blender, okay? It is a service that Stingray, DP Roberts, and John Meyer, who we call the big three, um, brilliant guys, and you send that out to the Cloud Blender, the Clender, and it mushes it together. Okay, it takes your terrain, it takes your splines, and it mashes them together to come back with meshes, which are 3D objects now that represent a fairway, but the shape of the fairway, the elevation of the fairway. Really cool, right? So once we have this, okay, we pull it into Blender, and Blender is also free, 
okay? And you can do a lot of things in there. In Blender, you can add bridges, okay? You can actually do a thing called vert painting to do some custom, like, to make things look really good, but you don't have to do that stuff, okay? You can use default textures and things. This can take one to 20, 20 plus hours, depending how involved you get with your vertex painting. But the bottom line is we export this, okay, into Unity. Now, when we pull it in Unity, that's where all the magic happens. We start to add things like trees and grasses and weeds, um, clubhouse, you can see in here, houses, cars, parking lots. We add textures. Uh, we add apply physics to everything so that we now define that a fairway is going to behave like a fairway. We define bunkers that are going to you know, uh, work as bunkers. This is the Unity interface that you see here. I know it looks really complex, but the tutorial series walks you through all this and how to use it. Unity is, yes, you guessed it, it is free, okay? We have a very specific version of Unity called 2018 that we need to use, it is free. All right, moving on. Oh, I'm gonna say Unity is free, but Unity is modular. There's lots of software that can be plugged in Unity. That's where the costs come from. There's a thing called RAM. River Auto Material. And what RAM does is it allows you to dig out your terrain and create like really cool looking creeks and really do a good job on your bunkers. That's one of the most popular things. Um, there are other tools that you can spend a lot of money. You can buy things like trees to use inside of Entity, uh, Unity. So there's lots of things you can buy. However, you do not need to buy anything. You can build a very basic course without buying any of those plugins to go into Unity. All right, moving on. 3D modeling, which is completely optional. Let's say you, you want to build the clubhouse on your course. You can do that in Blender. Uh, this might sound familiar because yes, we used Blender previously to create our meshes, right? We can also use Blender to 3D model things like houses and structures, pretty much anything. Uh, Pixar Studios actually uses Blender to make a lot of the movies. Um, in this case, what you're looking at here is Milton Hershey's mansion that I built for the Hershey Country Club West course. This took me probably 30 plus hours because I got extremely detailed. You can see stairs, bricks, um, the windows. I even went in uh, and even did the stained glass. I don't have it, you can't see it from this angle here in Blender, but I even created the stained glass windows. That's because it's fun. I like doing stuff like that. But the bottom line is this can take as many hours. In some cases, you have a course like uh, Riverwalk, which has so many buildings. R. Dyer, who created Riverwalk, he probably spent more time on those buildings inside of Blender than building the course itself. So the next thing here, finishing up, is you're going to take your, go into Greenkeeper, and you're going to add your out-of-bounds, your tees, your pins, your house, your, your hazards, your course information. That takes anywhere from one to five hours. It's kind of a boring job, but it's what you do in Greenkeeper. Greenkeeper is going to bundle it up and then you're ready to play your course. You can submit it for beta so that some of the other designers in the community can take a look at it and see if they find anything wrong. And then lastly, if you want, you can submit to publish inside of GS Pro. So that is the end of the, the series, or less I should say my introduction here. Um, I hope you will continue into the course building process. I also hope I'm not too annoying because you're gonna be hearing my voice a lot in the series if you continue. So. If you decide to continue, good luck and have fun on your course building journey.